Hello and welcome to Closing Arguments. I'm Michael Ayala in for Vinnie Politan. We begin today with breaking news out of Cobb County, Georgia. Tonight, a press conference is starting in the shooting at an Atlanta area golf course over the weekend that left golf pro Gene Siller dead. A live press conference is beginning right now, so let's take you out there live to Cobb County where the police department is holding a press conference. 2021, detectives from our Crimes Against Persons Unit secured an arrest warrant for the lone shooter who's now been identified as Brian Anthony Roden. He has been charged for the murders of Eugene Seiler, Paul Pearson, and Henry Valdez, on the, which were committed on the afternoon of July 3rd at Pine Tree Country Club. Mr. Roden was apprehended this afternoon by members of the Fugitive Task Force and the U.S. Marshal Service. Mr. Roden was arrested in the Shanley area and he has ties to the metro Atlanta area. Mr. Roden has been charged with three counts of murder, three counts of aggravated assault, and two counts of kidnapping. The arrest in this case is due to the tireless investigative efforts of the men and women of the Cobb County Police Department, our community members, and our partners both in local and federal law enforcement. Our homicide unit, our technology-based crimes unit, our violent crime bureau, and even our uniform patrol officers and their initial response to the crime scene should be credited for the successful outcome in this arrest. We literally had detectives that have worked around the clock and some have literally slept in their offices since July 3rd trying to clear this case. Several of our federal partners have also assisted in the investigation. We'd like to thank the U.S. Marshals Task Force, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the ATF, U.S. Secret Service, and Homeland Security investigators that have assisted us. I'd also like to thank members of the Kennesaw Police Department, Ackworth Police Department, KSU, University Police, and then the Cobb County Sheriff's Office who provided deputies to help secure the scene during the investigation. But I think one of the most important things we'd like to thank our citizens, our community members from that area. Many of them provided useful tips that our detectives were able to investigate and provide leads on. Our partnership with the community is what continues to help us properly investigate such horrific and horrible crimes. And this resulted in a successful apprehension of this individual. Although the suspect in this case is in custody, we implore the citizens to remain as committed to helping law enforcement in all other cases so our other victims and their families might see justice and some amount of closure. As this remains an active case and investigation, we'll be limited on the amount of information or details that we can, we can release. But with the suspect in custody, our investigators will continue to work the case to its completion and move it forward to the Cobb County District Attorney's Office for prosecution. Now, at this time, we'll take a few uh, questions. How did, when did his name to... first come up in this investigation? I'm sorry? When did his name first come up in this investigation? His name came up within a, within a few days. Of the investigator, beginning can you investigation. tell us how his name came up, under what circumstances uh, his name came up and led you to ultimately these charges? At this time, I do not want to release that information because it's critical to our investigation and the, and the investigation is not closed, it continues. And just a quick follow-up, can you give us any indication of the chain of events that led up to this and what possible motives there could have been for these two bodies that were found? At this time, I'm not, I'm not going to release any information related to that. Is there a prior relationship between either the two victims from out of state and killer or each other? Did they know each other before? That is something that we're exploring. Uh, we definitely feel confident there was no relationship between the shooter and Mr. Siller. Are you aware of his arrest by uh, another Metro Atlanta County a few hours after Mr. Sillers was killed, uh, arrest for DUI? I have been told that he had a previous arrest. Yes, sir. 
but you did not know, obviously, at that point that, that his name might be connected to this investigation. At this point, I don't want to discuss what all we knew at that point because we're, like I said, the investigation is continuing and we're actually involved at this moment with discussions and with him. What sort of uh, record do you know about him, possible criminal record uh, in Metro Atlanta or elsewhere? Uh, that is something that I think uh, we're not going to discuss this evening. Maybe, maybe it'll come up in a future uh, discussion. Yeah, you know, a lot of people in the community obviously were worried. They were scared about this. This is obviously something that is normally happening in Cobb County. To the people out there right now who are watching, who are in that public, what would you want to tell them about what they should feel about where this investigation is? I realize that some members of the community felt some frustration. Uh, they felt like they had limited information, and I can respect that feeling. Uh, from the perspective that I'm at, I knew we had a mission to come to a successful conclusion of this and provide a form of justice to the Siller family. And the successful arrest and prosecution was our highest priority, and that's what we were focusing on. Chief, why did this guy drive onto the golf course? That's that's part of the investigation. I'm not going to discuss right now. I'm sorry. The other two victims. How, how long before they were found they died? A matter of hours. I would. I think I would say that uh, discovery of all individuals who were deceased were was made in a pretty rapid time frame. Were they all killed in the area? I believe that would be a correct statement. That initial yes, kidnapping, was that in the metro area or was that out of state? That's, uh, that's information that I don't think we can discuss at this point. Uh, that's still part of the investigation. You said Roden had time. I think, uh, I think, uh, I think we've probably reached our five question limit. So I'm going to turn this over to uh, Sergeant Delk. Thank you very much for coming. I know it was very, very short notice, but it's a case that is very important to a lot of members in the community in the metro Atlanta area. So, uh, Appreciate you being here. But there are no other Thank you very much. Facing arrest in this chief, is that correct? Guys, if y'all do have any questions, I know y'all have a ton of them. Specific, he's not going to be able to answer. We won't be able to answer specifics about this because it is ongoing. But things like how to get a uh, picture of the suspect, you can email us, it'll go directly to the sheriff's office and book him. What if he tell us like his age and, and yeah, where he all lived? Of that, if I don't have that with me right now, we have to confirm that. Office. I don't have the specific information. I what about these guys killed the golf course? I don't know. I don't know the answer to those questions. I don't have any of the specific ones that the, the detectives were holding everything close to the vest because they were investigating. They still are investigating. What about the you want to stay up behind the mic, Wayne? Can you tell me before you talk to me if you went to the Cash County on the live call? I don't know if I can tell you about the criminal I know that. But you must know that you can. I know that. And I know that you know. All right, so an arrest has been made in a case that we brought to you a couple of days ago involving a bizarre uh, murder on a golf course. Actually, three people were killed at the 10th hole on a golf course in Kennesee, Georgia. Um, just, just really bizarre facts. And Chief Kim, Ta Kim uh, excuse me, Tim Cox of the Cobb County Police Department says they now have Brian Anthony Roden from Chambly, Georgia, under arrest, we're efforting a picture of him. Uh, we provided eventually to the press. They say he was apprehended by the Fugitive Task Force and Marshals. Cooperation across many, many departments. He thanked many of them. Wouldn't give many details, calling it still an open investigation. He did say that they're, ha they're in discussions with him about the crime. So maybe there's a larger story here. So we still don't have the actual facts of this bizarre murder, but we do know that someone is currently in custody by the name of Brian. Brian Anthony Roden. We do not have an age on him yet. And we do know that he's connected to Metro Atlanta as well. All right, let me bring in my think tank. Joining us tonight in Atlanta, Georgia, criminal defense attorney and law professor at Emory University, Molly Palmer. Joining us from the Bronx, New York, my old stomping grounds, criminal defense attorney Renee Hill. And in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, family law attorney Jennifer Brandt. Thank you all for being with me tonight. And we have a resolution in a case that we were all wondering how, what happened, how it could have happened. We're closer to getting answers. We don't have answers. But one thing I mentioned back when we did the story was I was sure that there was going to be a quick resolution. Um, just a quick uh, reminder, the, these folks were on the 10th hole on a, in a pickup truck, um, a robbery of some sort, something was going on, 
Um, someone took a gun, shot the two people who were in the truck. The golf pro comes over to see what's happening. He gets shot. Then the assailant flees on foot. Um, so love to get your thoughts. Molly, let me start with you. Well, you know, Michael, it's interesting because this community, Cobb County, Georgia, is very safe. They don't have many crimes whatsoever, let alone a violent triple homicide. And I think the community was really concerned about the fact that this killer was on the loose. Um, and I think the press conference in that respect was a bit performative. It was to put Cobb County and the surrounding areas at ease. But what's interesting is that Mr. Roden was not arrested um, fleeing the state or the country. He was just in the county next door. Chambly, Georgia is literally just mere miles from Cobb. And so he had, I think, been there since this incident had happened. Yeah, and you know, what's interesting, Renee, is that when you look at a case like this, it is one that unnerves the community. Um, this is, I mean, again, I called it bizarre. What else can you call it when you have a triple murder in the 10th hole of a golf course? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, uh, you know, during broad daylight. And of course, that is going to unnerve everyone that someone would have the ball to not only commit this crime, but to commit it, you know, during the daylight where you can be seen. And then he, he leaves. And like Molly said, he doesn't really leave the jurisdiction or he doesn't go very far. So the community was certainly looking for uh, some swift justice in, in this case, uh, justice being someone apprehended and someone now has been apprehended. It seems as though uh, all law enforcement of all aspects were involved in this case. So it would seem to me that they knew exactly who they were looking for and the type of force that they needed to uh, locate this person. And they did it relatively quickly. Yeah, and the police wouldn't really give a lot of information as to how his name came up. Again, that will probably come out in time. But he did talk about uh, the partnership with the community and how the community helped out. And, and Jennifer Brandt, it just highlights the fact that when the community's involved, when they're active in an investigation, it just, it, it just makes everything go easier. Absolutely. And it, it seems that everybody, well, it was such a tragic story. I mean, I don't think any of us are not disturbed by hearing what happened and that the golf pro sort of happened upon, it appears, this crime going on and got shot sort of accidentally is what they're reporting. Um, so I think everybody was upset, as Molly had said, in the community itself and, and really made a concerted effort to try to find this guy um, and, you know, and bring him to authorities and, and I think everybody worked together. So I think you're right. When the community is uh, alert to this and can, he was right there hiding in plain sight, um, I think it, it made things go a lot quicker. All right. Just to reiterate, um, an, an arrest in a case that we brought you, a triple murder on a, on a golf course in Kennesaw, Georgia. Uh, Brian Anthony Roden has been arrested by police. He's from Chambly, Georgia. As um, Molly mentioned, it's just a, a, a county just right next to uh, Cobb County. So lots of details still yet to come out. The investigation remains open and conversations are being had with this defendant. So we're expecting more information. We'll get that to you as soon as we have it.